What's going on guys? Welcome back to Once A Day Uploads on the Weston Smith channel. Today, we're showcasing our new battle shads, you guys. This is insane. We've been looking forward to picking some of these up. They're so rare and exclusive. They sold out in two minutes. I barely got them in my cart. I know a lot of friends who went to go purchase these and still couldn't get them fast enough before they were gone, man. So if you guys wanna know how to get a hold of some of these in the future, they go for about 55 bucks a piece. Let's go ahead and tell you throughout the video on how you can get a hold of some of these. Let's go ahead and show you guys these things and get into rigging them. Okay, perfectly rigged. Y'all, the battle shads are in, man. Check this out. I'm literally over here working on today's video and we got another something to talk about. Just ordered these on Friday, May 29th. They ship the next day, Saturday. It is now Wednesday the 3rd, man, and they are here. And this is my first time taking a look at these things. Holy smokes. I, I don't know if it's Goldbin or Goblin because I, I don't know if it was a typo. Well, we can call it Goblin, but here's the first one. Check this guy out and we're gonna take these out of the packaging. Here's the pearl. Woo! Looks just like the Citizen, only it's got this nose harness. They're supposed to last way longer. These are 7.5 inches. They're not like sixes or sevens. Whoa. Man, I am so excited. These are probably like our new favorite baits right here. I'm gonna open one of these up for you guys. First one is the Hitch. This color is so sick. It's like a silverish with a hint of blue. Be kind to the new baits. Oh my gosh. That is incredible. It looks better out of the packaging. Look at that, oh my gosh. I don't even know, like these can't be garage queens. Zeke, you're messing up the video. This battle shed, 7.5. Marshmallow, battle shed, 7.5. Max, battle shed, it's 7.5, it's the new one. It's the new one. Otis. I just don't care. Man, we gotta rig one of these up and throw it tonight. So this thing has a harness in it compared to like the Citizens. The Citizens are just all plastic and you just use the beast hooks in it. But with these guys, it has this head case harness. There's a harness in here. There's like a, I don't know what it is, but anyways, it's bad to the bone. And so now this little ring is built in and you're not supposed to be able to yank this thing out, basically. It's, it's supposed to prevent those nose blowouts that you might get with a lot of the owner hook uh, style baits, like beast hook style baits, because you're constantly yanking that thing out of there and those pins are only in so tight. This thing is supposed to be legit. 10 knot beast owner hooks that we just picked up yesterday. Let me get one of these things rigged up for you guys. Snaggless swim bait in pursuit of giants, man. 7.5 battle shad, working class zero. Design tested and handcrafted by Mike Gilbert. Chaos air chamber. So once we get this thing on the hook, there's this air chamber right here. You see how it squishes nice and easy? So when your hook is sitting inside the bait, and the bass goes to grab it, that will just collapse and they'll get spiked by that hook and you'll make sure to connect. Stealth mode hook slot. Got the hook slot on the bottom here. This is for your beast owner hook's weight and I'll show you that here in just a second. It's gonna sit flush. Um, rigging video is available. It's got a tormentor twist tail. That thing is just like, dude, I already know in the water that's gonna be over the top. 7.5 inches, 2.5 ounces un, uh, unrigged with a 10 knot Weighted beast hook required. The beast hooks are sold separately. We got ours at Academy. I'll link them down in the description below, but uh, locally you can maybe find them. I don't remember where I put them. Where's the owner hooks? Yep. I believe I'm gonna need a pair of pliers. Oh yeah, okay. Found these in the garage. Our brand new 10 watts. And the pliers necessary for everything. First, y'all, let's take off this mic right here and put on this guy, the Sennheiser Wireless. Alrighty then, guys, here we go. Let's get prepped and ready. 10 knot weighted beast hooks. They are uh, a two pack, by the way. So, whenever you guys get a, uh, if, if you get the six knots, you get a three pack. If you get the eight knots, it might still be a three pack. But if you get the 10 knots, these big boys right here, you're getting a set of two. There we go, that's the beast owner hook, weighted belly. Comes in at a solid half ounce. What we need to do is get rid of this locking pin on here. So I'm gonna twist this all the way off, if I can uh, manage that without having to just completely destroy it, I will. Boom. 
So take that little guy off first. Now it's just a bare hook. It looks like on this side, there's a bit of an indention. So I'm gonna try and rotate it away from that and see if that's the trick. So you pull it away from that left side on this one at least. I bet you this thing can almost get in there now. Oh, wrong one. That one's still got the attachment. How close am I? Oh, got it, sweet. Oh, that's gonna be so delectable. Squeeze that back together ever so slightly. I think we're good. I essentially opened it up a little bit, was able to get the hook in there by sliding it in, and then I tightened it. Now we're gonna go ahead and um, bend this hook up just a little bit. I should have done this beforehand. Mike recommends on these hooks, you'll see how it would almost bury back down into the body. You see that? It would be extremely weedless. But what you wanna do is bend that hook point up just a little bit. That way you can connect with more fish and you'll still be pretty daggum weedless, trust me. I'm gonna try and bend that hook out a little bit. And I have snapped one beast owner hook doing this before, so just be careful. They're not necessarily made for this, I don't think, but yeah, there we go. That sounded like it did something. It looks about the same. Yeah, you gotta apply a lot of force to these things. All right, Joe, I think after like the fourth attempt, it has angled itself up just enough. We'll find out soon, won't we? We're gonna end up pushing this guy into the body. That beast hook, I think it can be a little tough on that initial drive. There we go, she's up in there. And uh, we want the hook to come out, uh, generally speaking, at the end of that guy right there, but I'm gonna bring it out even a little bit further back, I think, because that's where the hook was really setting. Yeah, so you gotta bend this guy down, down and forwards, essentially. And now where's my hook point? A little too far, that might be perfect. I think that's perfect. There we go, guys. Alrighty then. Yeah, so you can see I might not have bent it up quite far enough, but look at that. That's definitely as weedless as you're gonna get, but I do kind of wanna bend that hook up a little bit more, be able to stick that fish when I get the bite. And see, look at that, the hook fits perfectly in that slot. I mean, this thing is not gonna get caught on nothing. Yeah, I think we did it that time. Look at, oh, okay. That is perfect, wow. A few attempts later, that is what I want right there. You're still not gonna hardly catch nothing on this guy right here. Oh my God, that's deadly. So that is how you rig one of these guys up. Let's see what else we got here, man. I wanna break out one of these Golden colors. Looks like slight variance in the colors, which is kind of to be expected. Everything is just handmade, custom one off. But check this out. This one's like almost like a white crappie versus like a, a black crappie. This is like so cool. Look at that. Ready to go. Legitimate. All right guys, so if you're unfamiliar with Working Class Zero, real quickly how we got into them, a little backstory, what we've been throwing and why we chose to get some of these very rare exclusive baits. Uh, a friend of ours named Jared, down south in Austin, Texas, man, he gave us one of these baits. He actually gave us this Silver Citizen 6. Check this thing out right here. And this was like one of the biggest baits we had ever thrown, a little six inch bait. Now it seems like it's not anything crazy because we've been using more and more swim baits lately. Uh, but this was like over the top ridiculous for us. And so uh, this one's seen a lot of uh, better days. His eyes are gone. He's been mended a bunch of times, soft plastic mended glue. I'll link that down in the description. He's been re re fixed back up. I mean, his nose has been blown out multiple times. He's like been torn in half and fixed back up. Things caught some big fish in its day. So this guy right here was the first citizen we got a hold of. Now he makes the citizens and the battle shad. And uh, the citizens, we've been catching a lot lately on this pearl white color. The best way for us to uh, throw these things, we've seen a lot of results on these guys right here on uh, heavy artillery. You wanna throw it on beefy reel. You also wanna make sure you've got a rod that can cast this thing. You don't wanna be throwing this on like a seven foot medium heavy. You're gonna want something more like a seven six heavy to start. Uh, I recommend just like an eight foot swim bait rod. Go get an eight foot swim bait rod. By the time you put a big hook on this or you start getting into some of these bigger sizes, you're gonna need that because you can't just go throw in two ounce, three ounce, four ounce baits with just those flimsy rods. You're not gonna get any distance. You're not gonna get the same hook sets from afar. You can snap your rods casting. There's just many reasons why you need to get swim bait dedicated gear. When it comes to the line, I trust nothing less than 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon. We've been using like 20 pound on one of our swim bait setups and 25 pound fluoro on our other. And I think it's just necessary when you're talking about big bait big fish, big bites, a lot of pressure. I mean, you want that stout line. I don't think there's any reason to go any lower. We did 17 pound line and Devin snapped one of these citizens off recently. So we had to make a change and up the gear. 
but the citizens come in at like a two pack for about 30 bucks or something like that maybe 38 if you get the seven so there's the larger citizen seven and there's the regular citizen six so this one is unrigged no hook in it i think i uh, blew out his nose and so we've kind of fixed him up patched him back up and so that's what'll happen whenever you use those beast owner hooks and you screw those in here you run the risk of when you set that hook and big fish bite and you're constantly yanking on this, those noses just get torn up and the hook comes out and you're left with a broken bait. But you can fix it back up. You can melt down plastic, like say take a Sanko and melt down some of the plastic, put it on there. You can heat this thing back up. We've done that before with like a hot knife and use a torch and then touch the knife to like the back or the nose. You can seal it right back up. Or the easiest way, and even with your, when you're out on the water, is to use mend it, soft plastic glue, and just rub a little on there and fix it back up, patch it up on the go only takes minutes and you'll be back casting that thing in the water now the battle shads are a step up uh, I would say in every regard they have a head case harness there's a hard harness inside of the nose now that's not gonna rip out there's a big heavy piece of equipment in there and so that thing is linked to that loop now that metal loop is what you then install the beast owner hook onto instead of just screwing the beast owner hook into the nose of the bait and then just going into the soft plastic so this right here is next level. The design is a little bit different. I'll show you two different colors here. You'll see this is a Citizen 7, and this is the Battle Shad. This Citizen 7 specifically has had his nose blown out, okay? Um, there's, no, there's no little hook slot in the back either. This is actually just a rip from the hook getting torn a couple times, and so that will happen over time. These baits are actually very durable with how many ways there are to fix them and repair them on the go, so you don't have to worry about much. Now they both have that chamber on the bottom. You'll see the battle shad is a little bit rounded on the top and it has that extra fin up top, right? The tails, as far as the tail action, they seem pretty daggum similar. The citizen is so weedless. You can cast these citizens in areas of grass that you can't cast almost any other swim bait, especially the ones that kick a lot. Because if they kick a ton, then all of a sudden they're picking up that grass and you can't get through it. You want to be able to skirt right through that grass and get where those bass are hanging out. So you want to be able to get low, cruise through there nice and slow, and get those big bites, man. So what we've been doing is fishing out deep a lot lately. We've been getting more and more confidence instead of just hitting the banks and just hitting the reed lines and just hitting the shallow areas to actually go and cast out deep and identify and try and identify where these big bass are creeping. And so we are on the hunt for them. And you can do that with things like these baits right here. This will attract the big bass. They will come out to play whenever you throw something like this. They're not going to just feed up on the smallest of craws uh, all day long. These big fish are smart. They're not going to hit the same baits that everybody else is throwing. And on top of that, they're kind of lazy, man. I hear that they want a big meal that's going to actually satisfy them. We want to feed them something like the Battle Shad, man. This guy right here is going to get the job done. And this should last so many fish without getting torn up. I don't even, I can't even really guess at this point. The colors that we ordered in the Battle Shad were Hitch, Goblin, and Pearl. And then the colors that we have in the Citizens are silver, We've got pearl. We have the emerald green speckled, which is kind of like that crappie color. And then we have the green pumpkin. But yeah, guys, these working class zero baits are phenomenal swim baits, and they're very tough to get a hold of. If these things go on sale, you know they're going to sell out in a couple minutes, especially if it's the hottest color. If it's something brand new that no one's ever seen before, they're going to sell out like that. So if you guys want to get a hold of some of these, I don't know when the next drop is. I've been getting this question so much recently. I don't know when these baits drop. I don't know when they drop, what they're going to be. What you have to do is sign up for his newsletter, Mike's newsletter on workingclasszero.net or .com. I'll put the link down in the description for working class zero you guys have got to go sign up otherwise you're not going to know when they drop i don't know when they drop i don't have any insider information i just love the dude's stuff this isn't sponsored by working class zero in any way we just have been rocking these baits and catching some big fish lately and so that is really all there is to it with that being said we've shown you how to rig these things and now we're going to get to fishing them in the next few videos guys you know we're uploading once a day so be looking out tomorrow it might just be the day till then peace <gasps>